Well, the other big story here at 10 comes from our I team. An investigation there is putting the spotlight on what local police departments are doing with forfeited guns. Our I team found thousands of forfeited guns were marked for destruction, but they were first stripped of their parts and then sold online. We've got investigative reporter Brian New joining us live right now. Brian, I think a lot of people were mind blown by your report last night. It first aired here last night, and you've already heard from viewers and from government officials. What are they saying? And Nicole, I can tell you there are a lot of different opinions out there on what police should do with these guns. And while the ATF says the recommended best practice is to destroy these guns in their entirety, we found here in North Texas law enforcement agencies often take a different approach. Evidence rooms across North Texas are full of guns. Guns police departments need to get rid of. So some departments melt them, some crush them, while others don't destroy them at all. The next item is bid number F2024056. This is for the sale of weapons and accessories for the sheriff's office. In February, Tarrant County commissioners gave permission to the sheriff's office to sell 21 forfeited guns to licensed gun dealers. The move netted the sheriff's office more than $46,000, as well as the ire of some residents. Talk about immoral behavior by your county government, selling weapons back and putting them back on the street when we have the massive problems that we have. This is just lunacy. Thank you for your time. But even in cases where seized weapons are not directly sold, parts of guns can still end up back on the street. In the past five years, more than a dozen North Texas police and sheriff departments have handed thousands of seized and surrendered firearms to a company called Gulf Coast Gunbusters. The company offers law enforcement a convenient and free method to dispose firearms. Using its firearm pulverizer, it crushes guns into pieces. But not the entire gun. Only the gun receiver is crushed, the part that is legally considered the actual gun. Gulf Coast Gunbusters, which declined to comment to the I-Team, strips off the other parts, then sells them as gun kits through an online gun broker. If we're saying we want to get dangerous guns off the street, then if someone comes up with a loophole to build ghost guns out of uh, destroyed guns, then we got to close that loophole. When the CBS News Texas I team informed Dallas County about Gunbusters process, County Judge Clay Jenkins directed the sheriff's office to stop sending guns to Gunbusters. Other local law enforcement agencies did the same. That's a high point, nine millimeter semi-automatic uh, pistol. But departments told the I team finding safe and efficient ways to dispose guns is not easy and can be expensive. Dallas County is currently working on a new agreement with Gunbusters to destroy their guns entirely, but this service will not be free and could cost the county around $70 for each firearm destroyed. For Dallas County and for police chiefs like Chief Brooke Rollins in Louisville, ensuring that no part of a seized firearms ends up back on the street is worth the expense. It's a big deal when you take possession of somebody's firearm. It needs to be disposed of properly, even if it costs money, because that's the responsible thing for us to do. However, other North Texas police departments argued that the cost to taxpayers for destroying guns in their entirety may not be warranted. So in response to those who criticized him for selling forfeited firearms, Tarrant County Sheriff Bill Wayborn likened it to selling a car. He says just as it would be wrong to assume someone buying a car would go get drunk and kill someone, he said in a statement, quote, it would be anti-American to assume that a legal gun owner who buys a gun would then go out and violate the law.